Okay. If you don't mind. She, she won't be here before the reading is done. Oh, no. no. Okay. So we're on October uh, 7th, right? Really? I don't know. I'm not keeping track of anything. This is COVID, COVID season. COVID season. <laughs> COVID season. I, I lost all track of everything. Make sure, you know. Make sure I'm right. Yep, Wednesday, October 7th. Okay. okay. Well, we got this Old Testament first. So the first reading is uh, Jeremiah 8. How can you say we are wise, but we have the law of the Lord, when actually, actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely? Okay, hold on a second. So, but now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, doesn't that mean... A lot of the time they say, well, the Bible, if it wasn't whatever, that, that somebody was, uh, uh, not anointed, but how you say, uh, you know, so, somehow, you know, they, they were writing because uh, God or the Lord, uh, you know, allowed them to write. Now here, maybe I'm listening to it wrong. They're saying, hey, not everybody's in that situation. So how do you know what to pick out who's, who, who was writing in the spirit of the Lord and who wasn't? Yeah, well, of course, the, the prophets are... Are those who the Lord uh, uh, shared His word with, and they were to give the word to the people. So, uh, this prophet Jeremiah is saying, "How can you say we are wise, for we have the law of the Lord, when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely?" So, just because they have the law doesn't mean they're going to deal with it in a good way. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's Jeremiah, and then uh, Colossians 3, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Okay, so he's uh, exhorting his uh, followers to be... Uh, High-minded and, and set them set, set their hearts on uh, uh, spiritual things. But you know? aren't they, you also saying that if he was raised, if, in other words, that's what you know, so you should go what you know. If he yeah. wasn't raised with that, if he was raised with a bunch of things, then you have to have to make choice. I, I think you're saying that you ain't got no choice right now. You 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 started with this, you got to continue with this, no? Yeah, I guess you can say that also. You've been raised with Christ. All right. So now let's take a look at um, Psalm 78. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So this deals with the problem that um, it seems like some people keep on uh, in their ungodly ways no matter what. So, Jeremiah deals with this problem, and he predicts that uh, the Israelites will be punished for it, and they do get punished for it. And that's, a, that's one of the themes of the Bible, okay. sin and punishment. I got you. Yeah. What's the last one? Is the one? last one is, uh, oh, this is a good one. This is a proverb. Finish your work and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Thanks. Well, your That's wife is here, so you're going to walk the dog now, so maybe I'll just come by tomorrow. Well, no, we can talk a little more. What, tell me about the book you read. Oh, this is the one I told you I was going to bring you, just, just so you, you know. It's the, uh, this is a, you're going to love this title, because you, you could read it for, for us. How Trump Stole 2020. Wow. What's it? Oh, with comics. Is it a comic book? No, well, the comics oh, is back. Okay. The it's comics some... is back here. I got you. But here they have they have they have pictures, a lot of pictures. Yeah. But don't yeah. you find it ironic? He said, "What twenty twenty is not done yet." Twenty twenty hasn't happened yet. Yeah, right. So what this book does, it, it tells you the stuff that happens before twenty twenty. Like like let me. It's like for instance. Uh, let me just go to some uh, highlighters so you can understand what I'm saying. Make make sense to you. Uh, okay, uh, this is the says uh, bubble trouble. The nasty secret of American elections is that we don't count all the ballots. 
even if your mail-in ballot arrives on time and is accepted, your vote for presidency may not may and may still not count. The U.S. has a huge problem with residual, that's uncounted ballots. The voter's choice is not readable by op optical scanners or other counting machines. So the, the machines that they're using to read these mail-in ballots, then there's a problem. So a lot of people were kicked out there. But let me just jump to this other thing it says over here, this other thing. With mail-in, there is no scanner to warn that the vote won't count. The non-count will soar because mail-in voters make understand understandable errors such as marking an X next to their choice instead of filling in the little circle, you know, the bubble. So any technical thing, like in a court of law, mm -hmm. can knock the thing out. So a lot of people get knocked out. Not, you know, if you're a first-time ballot person or whatever have you, then this stuff might happen. What else do I have here? I have some other highlighted here. here. Um... Uh, it, 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 it's just the last thing with uh, I don't mean that, but what do, you, what do you think about that? Well, you know, the technicalities are knocking you out because remember now we have a big mail-in thing right now because of the yeah. the, 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 the COVID. Yeah, the mail-in thing had a lot of inherent problems in it. and you can see that places already where it's been uh, where the mail-in ballots are being uh, mishandled and abused it's already coming out. What do you mean by abused? Well, like the they're mailed out and uh, uh, they're not, not received by the people that are supposed to get them and they end up in people's cars and one thing and another. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. I think people ought to be uh, required either to, to go in to vote in person or to vote absentee with the system we've already got. But the absentee ballot can be somewhat assured that it's actually from the person. Well, the big, the, 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 there was, I was reading someplace else, there's other technicalities, but even that, remember, this is a, what do you call that? This is a, a unusual situation. I mean, yeah. they didn't know, the absentee ballot thing, let me put it this way, there's a large volume of, there's going to be a large volume of, of what do you call that, um, mail-ins, because yeah. just because of the situation we're in. Now, if we have all these, if we have, we've, if we traditionally had all these mail-ins, forget the absentee, absentee is still mail-in. Yeah. If we have all these problems before, and you're going to have, I don't know how many, many more people mailing in now, then those problems are going to be really, you know, brought up. I mean, it's, the, the numbers are going to shoot up. Yeah. So, you know, and then, and then you have this whole thing. Now, surely you must remember now when they, uh, the, the postmaster general, the guy that's in charge of the post office now, he has no expertise in post office work and he's doing some stuff that makes the, that cripples the post office. So now you had, you know, it's, look, what I'm, I guess what I'm asking, what, what advantage is it to not help the post office or help the mail-in situation and to in fact, it looks like hurt the mail-in situation. That's my question, I guess. I don't understand. Thinking, you know, I think the voting should be limited to uh, voting in person, which is very possible, or absentee ballots, which is a system that we have developed and which works. If the person can't no, even. You're not, you're not answering my question. I'm saying we're in an emergency situation. And because it's an emergency situation, something's going to happen. Why aren't we trying to, we're trying to do, it sounds like, it sounds like we're, everything is being done to, how was the big word? To exacerbate the situation. Well, I like that. That sounds like a good word. To, to, to make the situation even worse. That's what it means. That's like, does that mean? I mean it makes, makes it even worse. It's not trying to help the situation. It doesn't matter if we have a, a what do you call that, a absentee thing or it, it, even if you, okay, so you understand, so you still don't answer that question. That's, I just need that question. That, that I just don't, I'm trying to understand. Now you, you know, you got the whole Republic, the Republican club that you have here, are they talking about this? Uh, I don't think we've talked about it too much, no. Huh. We might, not in the, uh, 
not in our meetings, maybe outside the meetings somewhere, I don't know. But uh, I think we've, we've, we've got a good mechanism, and I think uh, the, uh, I think the uh, some of the Democrats are trying to use the uh, so-called emergency situation to uh, to uh, you know control the election by means of mail-in ballots. Okay, hold on a second. How could you call it a so-called emergency situation? Is it a, is it an emergency situation or not? If you say so-called emergency situation, it sounds like it's not an emergency situation. Is, no. Are we in an emergency situation, my question? No, I, I wouldn't say so. We're not. Okay, the COVID is not real. Oh, well, COVID is real. But so are many other diseases which we've you know dealt with in the past and gotten through. There's many viruses and the flu season every year. Uh, the co season uh, COVID is a little different than these, but uh, it's not like a, a uh, an emergency that the, the country has never dealt with before. How 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 a little different are you? How are you defining a little different? How a little different are we talking about? I've never I've never been. I mean, I've been here a long. I mean, I've been in the states. I've been oh. in, in Africa, and this has affected the whole world. This is not a little different. This is I would even say a lot different. Now, if you say it's a little different, tell me how little different it is when you got hospitals overwhelmed, when you got uh, reports of of tens of thousands of deaths. How is that a little different? We, I've never, even when you had these uh, little outbreaks all over the world, you never had tens of thousands of SARS or that kind of deaths before, not at least not reported. And you can't, you, know, you can say it's the Democrats trying to game the system, that's fine. But if the Dem Democrats trying to game the system, it sounds to me like the Republicans are also gaming the system in another direction. Is this true or not? I'm just, I'm trying to, look, I'm just dealing with facts. I'm not trying to deal with, I'm not trying to make rights or wrongs or, or corrects or not. I'm, you know, it's, it's just sounding to me that anyone, least of all you, you you Harvard educated, least of all you, you taught science for, for most of your life. Yeah. You teach now. Someone like you can, you're teaching science. Wait a second. You know science. So make me understand is what I'm trying to, trying to get you, get, get, get out of you. Make me understand how this is not a whole lot different then, then, you know, people, when this first started, people started comparing this to the, some turn of the century flu that, that, that wiped out whole whatever. And that's before they had this, a lot, a lot of people on the planet. I'd say, uh, you know, this is, uh, we've had about a little over 200,000 uh, deaths from COVID. A lot of these people are, most of the people are, are older. In other words, they're, they were probably nearing the time of their death uh, anyway, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the deaths were in uh, combination with some other kind of uh, uh, comorbidity or underlying condition, uh, and there were they were incentivized to uh, report the deaths as COVID, so the, the number may be uh, slightly exaggerated. Uh, I think you mentioned hospitals being overwhelmed. I think in the United States, none of the hospitals were ever overwhelmed, even in, even in New York. If we had. Uh, oh, really? I was in New York. I'm telling you, they were body bags. <laughs> in the hallways. <laughs> these, are body, I'm talking about, these are body bags in the hallways. I've seen video of this. Not from the news people, but from somebody who worked in the hospital. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that, that's pretty... Uh, it's pretty severe, but there was yeah. It's uh, severe if you have body bags in the hallways. Yeah, <laughs> you had refrigerated trucks coming up not only in New York but other places. That's not true. Okay, look. Obviously, let's leave that one alone. Let's leave that alone. Now, first of all, I really got to get, have to understand why you're telling me that there. If people have to, if I'm walking around right now. I've got people wearing masks all over the place. 
I have a shield on right now. Yeah, yeah. Now this is a, let me meander for just a second. Let me go back. Mr. Trump just had a situation where he supposedly had had a, 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 a somehow caught the virus. Yeah. And he was in a a crowded situation where he caught the virus. And he went in for a couple of days. They put him, you no. Know, they put him in the in 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 hospital or whatever have you. Of course, he had the best care or whatever have you. You know, a lot of people don't have that kind of care because they're not president of the United States. Right. And it seems like he was out in a couple of days. Uh, now, he, he, I don't, well, I know a little bit about viruses. I used to be a lab technician. Yep. Even if you have a cold, the cold, they used to say it takes seven days to, 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 for a cold to be over cold, whether you, you know, whether you take something or not. That's what it is. So this is not a cold. This is a virus. And they're telling, they say in two weeks, but let's forget the two weeks right now. Let's say in three days, he's out, which means that he still has, uh, what do you, you know, virus, whatever people, you know, he's still got it. You know, he might be walking around and feeling good, but he takes off his mask. Now, I didn't, I didn't know that somebody told me this. And he gets in the car with other, with other Secret Service people. The thing about a mask is not for the person who has a virus. Yeah. Well, yes, I guess no, it's not for the person who has a virus not to get the virus. So that person could be courteous enough not to give it to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. This behavior is almost like saying that, oh, I can give it to my Secret Service people. I can give it to whoever's around. Well, I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't know if that really happened or not. I, I you don't know if he took his mask off and took a took a joyride in in in, in, his, in his in his in his car. Uh, well, I mean, he might have uh, he might have had his mask off in the car while he was social distancing. I don't know how he did. It. How are you social distancing in the car with your with your Secret Service people? Come on, come on now. I, I like I keep on trying to say I try to figure out how a person who went to a, an elite university. And towards school, at, 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 at the highest level, high school, you know, <laughs> could possibly say, could, look, I know, look, I know you want your boy to be correct, but your boy ain't correct, okay? Well, There's well, no I mean, way you correct. There's no way he's correct by leading the nation. How could you lead? Remember, okay, let me put it this way. Remember the last time we talked, one of these times we talked, I said, this, you know, you, you have opportunities. Now, there's this thing if between now and election day, that's one thing. But if we really wanted to make sure to test this whole thing, if everybody put on a mask between now and Thanksgiving, then we can just lick this problem. That was my theory, okay? I'm not saying it's correct or not. Yeah. Now, it seems to me when, when Mr. Trump got this virus, or diagnosed to have this virus, he had a golden opportunity to do a one or two, well, a bunch of things. But let's say the two extreme things would be, okay, I got the thing, everybody, we're all gonna mask up. As, as a president of the United States, I'm asking everybody to mask up. We're gonna mask up between now and election day. That's a month. And by the time election time's coming around, then we won't have to worry about uh, 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 how you say absentee ballots, anything like that, because everybody would be so we could we could all go to we could all go to the polls because we have licked this virus. And for those of you people, we can even go even further to go to because we want everybody to have a good Thanksgiving with their peoples, you know, with have yep. you know with their family. So we're actually going to go for two months all the way to then. Or <laughs> I ain't going to wear no mask. I'm going to be in I'm going to be in the hospital for two days. Not that everybody can go to the hospital because we ain't got no health care. You know, we ain't got no, you know, we ain't got no free health care, so not everybody can go to the hospital. And uh, I'm going to just act the way I want to act. Give me those two choices and tell me, let me ask you this, because it used to be a thing. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? I have no idea. Oh, that's a good question. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus try, try to save as many people? Would Jesus tell people to put masks on? Or would Jesus say, hey, let's just go ahead and breathe on each other? Well, I, I really don't know. You don't know what Jesus would do? No. What do you, what do you think he would do? <laughs> don't worry about what I think he would do. That's not, I'm not, I, I ask you the question. Don't ask, don't ask me the question. We can't answer a question with a question. Come on now. I think he would try to behave uh, reasonably in every situation and think of his, uh, think of the people he's around as he thinks of himself and uh, try to uh, honor, honor the Lord. 
Vaughn, yeah. you're being disingenuous, as they say. No, that's the, yes, you are. You are too. Don't tell me you're not being disingenuous. Look, let me tell you, let me do one more thing because you said something else. Because this book is kind of interesting. I gotta find this paragraph because this is funny. Well, this is funny to me. I don't. I guess it's not funny. There was this guy. His last name is Shabazz. So I guess he, you know, whatever he is. Uh. Uh. They, they, he, he, he couldn't vote, okay? Let me see. Uh, it turns out wrongly purged 340,134 people were wrongly purged um, uh, um, from some roles, okay? Yeah. That number was uh, uh, voters of whom were booted off the rolls for having moved their residence, though none had moved an inch. <laughs> Well, what that number huge though it is, miss were voters like Raheem Shabazz, one of the nearly 2,000 voters that contacted me, meaning uh, the author here, uh, Greg Palace, who wrote this book, uh, the How Trump Stole 2020, right? When they read our report, in other words, they put it, I guess Palace put out a report. Shabazz was, had indeed moved just down the road in the same neighborhood. But federal law, this would be Mr. Trump's law, is explicit. No one has to re-register and certainly no one may lose their vote if they move within the same county. We're not talking about the same country, same county. The state claims to notify every voter, in other words, you're supposed to have their, their, their whatever, their address on the rolls, facing the knife. Shabazz put the new address on his license, paid Georgia taxes from the new address. He was hardly in hiding. Shabazz has his own radio show. This is what made me interested because I'm a radio man. He was furious, is what Shabazz says. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta laugh. When they want me to pay a traffic ticket, they find me. But when my right to vote is at stake, I'm invisible. Riddle me, I, give, I love this, this, I used to watch the old Batman thing with Adam West on TV. Yeah. Riddle me that, Batman. What is, what, what, what's going on with that? In other words, if, 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 if Amazon can find you and Federal Express can find you, then how come the voting people can't find you? If the, if you change your license, if the if the tax people can find you, yeah. this is huh? what I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm after, after re, I guess after read as I'm reading this book, I'm actually I'm laughing at almost every third page. You know, well, I mean, so what's going on? Bureaucratic mistakes are made. All no, the no, no, no. They don't. But like there. he said, the bureauc They didn't make a bureaucratic mistake when he has to pay his taxes. Who? He's saying they can find me to pay the taxes. Emergency. Well, I'm trying to say, what kind of bureaucratic mistakes is there when, when, when they can find him? They can find him. He, the, the federal law says if you move within your county, you still have the right to vote. Yeah. He put he put his address on. He moved, so therefore he changed his license, so they had the address on his license. Well, I mean, uh, evidently someone made a mistake or overlooked. No, 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 that's not going to fly no place. Come on, now. This you was know, done intentionally. Errors are made all the time. I'm sure they are, yeah. but not at the scale where you have oh, 300,000 people well, I scale. I don't know about that. That's, that's the number he's reporting. And I'll tell you what, uh, I think I'm going to have to... Uh, Get ready to uh, okay. walk our dog now. I got you. You can go. But listen, I'm going to tell you one more thing. Here's the other thing. When you say people have to vote in person. I think it would be better for people to vote. No worries. No worries. Yeah. no worries. No worries. I believe, too. I'm voting in person. I'm going all the way back yeah, to Virginia yeah. to vote in person. I mean, right? I mean, in person, you can be pretty, pretty gotcha. darn sure gotcha. your vote's going to count. I believe you. Hey, I think we got an area of agreement. That's there. right. But the problem is, when you have a dense population and you have the COVID I like that then how is it, area of agreement. If you have a dense population and you have the COVID yeah. versus a, a sparse population, 
that means that the people in a dense population have more of a, 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 of a problem with getting the disease. No true? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know... And they make it so we have less polling places? Uh, reasonable precautions for people can vote in purpose. Uh, no, in no, person. they've been closing or, polling places in these prisons. Voting. They, 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 voting no, we, we threw it back into you. We don't want to, we want to vote in person. Right, My right. point is they've been closing polling places in dense population things, so people have, be, have yeah. to wait longer and all this. So who's doing that? Yeah, well, the, I guess the state and local governments. Thank you very much. Yeah. Look, I don't know what the game is here. But, you know, if you if you don't if you're telling me you didn't see Mr. Trump do what he did in the last few days, if you're telling me that that if you're telling me all this other stuff about, you know, there might be some mistakes or there's a, the, the, the pandemic is not really real. I got to look and say, what? What? What are you saying to me? The pandemic is not really real. No, it's real. It's real. Fortunately, 99 percent of people recover. They get the COVID. There are ways to treat it. Ninety-nine percent. How'd you get that number? That's I thought you. I thought you didn't follow numbers. Well, I follow that. That's a well-known fact. Ninety-nine percent hmm. of the people exposed to uh, COVID or that get it uh, recover from it. Uh, well, I, I I dispute that fact. I'll have to look it. I'm I'm not going to look it up. Okay. <laughs> you you pulled stuff out. You got the thing and say that though. I don't believe that. Okay. At any rate, look. Let me let me. What is today? Let me let me check in. I think check, we should leave on our. Uh, I emphasize in our area of agreement, and that is, it's, it's better to vote in person. <laughs> we agreed on that. That way, you can be sure you're you're there, and your vote's gonna your vote's gonna count. It's better to vote in person if yeah, you if if, you if, you, if you're not going to get the, the virus. I would say that I have to qualify my 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 agreement with you. But let's let's leave this until like this way. Let's leave this until Friday. Let me stop by on Friday. We have more time. Okay. You know, walk the dog, or whatever have you. Okay, I'll right? tell you what. I think I can be here on Friday. Let's see. Uh, Let's yeah. do that. But you know, and we'll do something else. I, will, I won't bring this book. This, some but areas, this, is, this is funny to me. You know, in some areas, we, we may have to agree to disagree. You know. No, I don't go to disagree. You know, either there's either a truth or not a truth. Okay. There's no such thing as I have to agree to disagree. Some politician said that. I'm not with that. Okay. Uh, okay. Either you got the facts or you don't have the facts. Okay. That's my point. You know. Okay. These cliches that I hear all the time, I don't go with these cliches. You know, I don't, I don't deal with these cliches at all. They don't, they don't, they don't excite me. <laughs> you know? uh, or as they say, here's a good cliche. You want a cliche? Facts are stubborn things. That's a cliche that I like. Oh, facts are stubborn things. Uh huh. Okay, Anthony. <laughs> okay, Mr. Morrow. Yeah.